Hello, everybody. Welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I am here in Winnipeg and uh, together with some very special guests that I'm super, super excited about. We have from Milk and Honey Distillery in Tel Aviv, Israel. We have uh, Tal Chotina and also uh, Tomer Gorin, both of whom are uh, deeply involved in, uh, in the distillery aspects with Tomer being the master distiller and, and Tal handling international sales. I believe that's your purview, is it not? I'm the head distiller, not master. The head not distiller. Master. Okay, well, uh, is there anybody above you for, for distilling? <laughs> well, no, but uh, there <laughs> are masters that are 40, 50 years in the industry. So where am I to be a master? I have a few good. years to do. All no, right. Actually, I'm doing the distillation. I'm doing the distillation, he's doing the sales. So we're just switching every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Fantastic. Uh, very exciting. Now, this is my first time trying your whiskeys, and I've been watching for quite a number of years and wondering when I would be able to come across Milk and Honey Distillery. And I started to see the, uh, the products coming into Canada about, I want to say about uh, 18 months or two years ago or so about. And um, was I uh, was waiting for the single malt, which is now here, and uh, again, just super excited to try these. And I'm just going to change the um, uh, the look of our layout here and see how that works. Okay, we'll try like that. Now, uh, I just want to see what happens. Um, so, anyway, for people who are just joining, my name is Mark Kaufman. I am the uh, uh, the creator here on Whiskey Whistle. And if you're just joining for the first time, I am super happy to have you and. Uh, let me just uh, invite uh, Tal. Tal, can you please introduce yourself? So, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, good evening from Tel Aviv. Uh, my name is Tal Kotiner, and uh, I am doing the international sales and uh, in, in milk and honey distillery in, from Tel Aviv. But also, I'm uh, I'm helping Toma with uh, not working. So. Uh, whenever he has a very busy day, I'm coming with uh, you know crazy ideas and stuff uh, uh, to to think about and uh, uh, tasting some stuff. Um, I'm the oldest guy in the distillery, which is, uh, means that everyone is young. I'm I'm not very young. I'm uh, 49. I uh, was born and raised in Tel Aviv, and uh, I think I'm one of the veterans in the whiskey business in Israel. I used to work for Diageo. Used to conduct lots of whiskey tasting. Uh, was consulting some uh, the Pernod Ricard importer here. But I think that uh, the the thing that for me this this job is uh, coming uh, you know every way every day to the office with with a smile because uh, it's it's something that we do it's something that we create and just feel like an ambassador of, of my country or in my city and uh, and of course working with Tomer which is uh, he's an amazing guy doing great stuff and I'm just trying to interfere sometimes with his job because it's just fun. Well, that's fantastic. Now, I, I would have thought that you were roughly about the same vintage as me. In fact, I guess you're you're three years my senior. So, uh, anyway, uh, I don't know if it's the the sunshine over there or the the high humidity, but uh, you look you look very young for for forty nine. Uh, anyway, thanks so much for for telling us about yourself. I'm telling him that every day. <laughs> and uh, Tomer, why don't you share a little bit about yourself with uh, with everybody? Okay, that will be quick. Uh, I'm uh, distilling at home for almost 20 years. Uh, started distilling at home, and uh, then I had two bars in Israel. Uh, from there, it it came into. Uh, I just started to to have interest in whiskey in particular. Uh, from there to there, I worked in Scotland uh, for a few months. Not uh, something uh, to be mentioned. And then uh, joined forces with Milk and Honey Distillery seven years ago uh, with Gal, who is the owner, and a few more uh, uh, owners. And uh, from seven years ago, I'm, I'm here in, at the Milk and Honey Distillery uh, doing the, all the professional stuff, uh, dealing with everything, distilling and blending and everything. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm also doing some uh, some other things related to whiskeys. Uh, I have some really small independent independent bottler uh, that I'm running. Uh, wow. Just my job 
just uh, things that I love. Uh, can't stop doing it. And uh, Whiskey Live Israel, I'm the licensee. The, I'm running it. Hi, Joe. Amazing. Yes, oh, I managed to connect with uh, with Joe. She's an, an old friend of mine, though we've never met. And uh, she, I, I, I didn't realize that she had such a collection of uh, milk and honey single malt whiskeys and, and I think maybe some gins and stuff as well. So super, super happy that, uh, that she's able to join us today. Uh, we go way back, don't we, Joe? And I'll just say a quick hello to everybody that's, uh, that's joined so far. We have uh, Benji Khan, uh, who has joined in. Reb, of course. Reb, again, thanks again for moderating the chat and uh, uh, keep people in line and make sure that, uh, that I'm notified if there's an interesting question that you want me to, uh, uh, to pose to the two gentlemen. Sure. And then we have uh, Joe, as I just mentioned. And uh, from Canada, over on the East Coast, we have Brandon McTaggart, who's joined, who is uh, now, even though he's in New Brunswick, very, uh, I think New Brunswick, Newfoundland, pardon me, uh, very far away from me, he's joined the Winnipeg Whiskey Club. So uh, that, uh, that tells me I'm doing something right there. Uh, anyway, so fantastic. Now, I just want to go through the timeline of this evening so that the people, everybody who's watching, so you're all aware of what we're going to be doing. Um, so we're going to be trying the milk and honey new make, and uh, we'll talk about uh, how to say to say cheers in uh, in Hebrew. And I think a lot of people know, but it's the it's the accent that's tough, isn't it? And and then we will uh, talk about some questions. I have some questions that I want to uh, to ask to the two gentlemen. Uh, so we'll go through some questions, and then we'll get into the young single malt, which what I think was released was at eighteen months old. Or something like that. Wow, less. Uh, a little bit less. Which which one you have? You had we released. I think oh, this is nine. Young ah, single malt. This one's the last one. The last one was uh, less than one year old. Oh wow! Okay. We yeah. had three releases. This one and the youngest was six years, six months, Month. and the yep. oldest was the uh, nine months. I guess I don't remember mm. already. Uh, Anyway, uh, we'll get into that, but I just tried that last night, and it is, uh, I'm impressed with how clean and how lovely tasting and how not young that distillate is on my palate. So that's quite interesting. So then we'll get into uh, the uh, some more questions. We'll talk about uh, Dr. Jim Swan and, uh, and his influence on Milk and Honey Distillery. And uh, then we will get into the standard, the, uh, uh, the, the worldwide expressions for milk and honey uh, distillery, the classic single malt, uh, the milk and honey uh, M&H elements uh, of sherry, and we'll taste and talk about those. And uh, then hopefully we'll have some, uh, some more viewers joining in by then. We'll have a quick chat. We'll take some questions from, from people who are watching along. And uh, then we'll check out the, the gins and also your roots herbal liqueur, which is mm -hmm. uh, uh, very, very interesting smelling. I haven't actually had a chance to try that yet. So we'll try that for the first time with you. And uh, then the very last thing, I'm saving the best for last, we will go through some cask strength milk and honey whiskeys. And uh, then just a few more questions peppered throughout there. So everybody, hope you've got uh, uh, you you've got your seatbelt on because we're going to have a great time today. And uh, Reb is going to make sure this is quite funny. He's making sure everybody's well behaved. And uh, this was really lovely. Um, uh, Joe shared a uh, picture with me. She's got her milk and honey sweatshirt on, and I might try to share that at some point. I'll have to send it to myself so I can open it here um, with uh, with everybody. If you don't mind, Joe, that's of course your photo, but. Uh, uh, please check her out. She is uh, on Facebook, of course, and uh, and Instagram. Rev Mordecai, um, he runs a interesting blog, so please check him out. Rev, you can please just uh, uh, type in your blog for people so they know where to to find that and read your your great content. And uh, another Canadian, let's call that founding uh, whiskey tube YouTuber that I think everybody is familiar with. We have Food Quig, who's uh, joined in. Uh, I don't know if you've caught any of Food Queen's content, but uh, uh, probably, probably he probably does the most hours a week of production on YouTube for for whiskey. So uh, he's uh, just a, a great great gentleman and um, uh, very very distinguished palate. 
Oh, okay. So Joe, Joe gave me permission to share that. I'll share that in a little while. And uh, well, without further ado, we will get started with uh, with the um, the new make. So let's let's do that. And I will uh, raise a glass to you, gentlemen, and say cheers. Cheers to you. And while we're at it, could you please share for everybody how to say cheers in in Hebrew? You have to you have to work on your you have to work on your yeah it comes from from here yeah. and you just say le chaim le chaim le chaim le chaim to like le chaim how's that yeah. with with a good le chaim le chaim le chaim le chaim cheers chaim cheers cheers uh, probably people are familiar with my last name, and obviously uh, is is a, uh, a Jewish name. And in fact, my uh, my 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 what can I say? My uh, my great grandfather, the at least religiously speaking, my great grandfather was uh, was was Jewish. And then, as I think everybody knows, this was in Denmark. And as uh, as the uh, World War World War Two, the lead up to World War Two, and all of the awfulness that happened, um, he made the decision to convert the family to the Danish Church, which is uh, Lutheran. And so the Kaufmans, my grandfather, my father, and myself, we've been uh, uh, we've been Christians ever since. Not that that's important, but I didn't even know about my Jewish heritage until I was about thirteen, and uh, I was uh, I was running. And someone goes to me, oh, Mark, uh, happy Hanukkah. And I say, I stopped in my track. I'm like, uh, I'm what? Yeah, Kaufman, right? You're, you're Jewish. I'm like, uh. So I went home and I talked to my dad. And, you know, oh, I wish he had sort of, uh, you know, taken me down that path a little bit and uh, showed me more of the heritage. But anyway, since then, my brother has uh, uh, married back into uh, the religion, per se, and uh, now we celebrate a lot of um, uh, a lot of the, the Jewish holidays together mm -hmm. as well. So uh, really interesting. And that's quite an aside, but I just want uh, to share that. So again, cheers. Let's give this a nice smell. Now I get something very, uh, uh, very, very tart, very citrusy. What's going on there? So before uh, Tomer is on go through the the method uh, through the production but um i think when you when you understand our new make you understand our our uh, house style and our our uh, um products because everything starts with the same new make even our gin um, i don't know you know if you ever tasted our gin but uh we we make gin from from single malt so every everything in the distillery starts with double distillation of malted barley uh, I think the fruitiness and the oiliness in this one, and of course, all the the scents you get, it's uh, first from the beautiful uh, uh, barley content, but then uh, from from the production. And I think that uh, Tomer can can go and uh, tell you a little bit about the cut, about the line arms, about everything. That's great. All right, so, um, Tomer, go ahead. So this new make is uh, made from unpeated barley. Uh, we source from mantons in England. Uh, we ferment the the wort for uh, up to seventy two hours. It depends on the on the period of the year, but uh, it's not a sh very short fermentation, but not the longest that I heard. Uh, there are a lot more, but that uh, that uh, the result of that is very fruity and uh, and. Uh, Maybe the citrus come from there. I don't know, but uh, very fruity uh, new make. Uh, you can also feel in the in the new make the maltiness, and uh, it's a little bit oily because of the uh, angle of the line arm that goes 45 degrees down. Uh, that's the angle of the uh, both steel line arms. Uh, that's important because we are cutting very high. We are cutting from 80 to 70. Uh, and that because we are aging the spirit in hot climate, uh, in hot climate. So the temperatures almost all the time are very high and uh, the humidity is high in Tel Aviv. 
and uh, we don't want a lot of uh, faints to go inside, uh, faints that will not be able to oxidize during the time because uh, the maturing time is, is short. And uh, that's the story about our new make. Well, it is quite fantastic. And as you say, it's got an oiliness to it. And really interesting, 45 degrees for the line arm. And I think everybody knows I've got this still back here. So that's the line arm. And when it is negative, when it's going down, I guess you'll get um, uh, less, uh, mm -hmm. less reflux and heavier, I guess, meatier, um, richer type of a spirit coming through. Am, am I correct in that? Yes, it gives you a spirit more close to the original recipe uh, and uh, more heavy in oils and everything. Every, every uh, drop that comes to the top of the steels goes inside the new make. Yes, amazing. Never go back to the steel. And you, you cannot, mentioned you, have, you, oh, you sorry. Get a, a second distillation with vapors that don't go, go back. I see, uh, I see. So, so thick. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Now, this is great. We've got quite a few uh, people joining in, including Yarka Winters, as we talked about. So, uh, hello, Yarka. Thanks for, for joining in. Uh, Yarka, I'm also going to make you a, a moderator since uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, in part thanks to you that this came together. And uh, I should also tell everybody here that um, that uh, I purchased myself one bottle of the classic and uh, everything else was graciously donated to the channel uh, through from from uh, from Milk and Honey's distillery uh, through the um, uh, the distributor here. So thank you very much. I do have to mention that um, now uh, what I will say is. Uh, uh, that um, I really, really enjoy this 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 new make. It's quite lovely. Um, you mentioned the the cut, and I think a lot of people don't quite understand the numbers you're mentioning. And you're talking about eighty percent ABV. So when the new make that's coming out um, hits eighty percent, uh, so there's a there's an increase, an increase from well from zero, uh, and then you'll eventually hit 80%. So that's when you start the cut and then you'll shut it off at 70%, which is that's this, that's ridiculously high. Mm -hmm. And I will speak from, from experience in that uh, I've uh, just done some experimentation with, uh, with that thing. And mm -hmm. uh, like that, that's a really, really, really uh, very, very narrow cut. And I think uh, for, for people that are, that are just trying, you know, your standard malts. Probably, it's more like down to about uh, sixty or fifty-five uh, for uh, for a lot of distilleries. Um, a wider cut that um, that well, it certainly affects the flavor. Um, do you feel like that is beneficial? Since despite the the temperatures where you are and the angel share, which we'll get into, but. Um, uh, does that uh, very narrow cut influence some, um, well, the great flavors that I'm tasting in these, these single malts? Well, a narrow cut gives you more light, uh, light uh, new make, but we do have the 45 degrees down line arm that uh, gives the oils, uh, the oiliness that we need. Uh, it required because we are, we know that we are going to age the spirit for, uh, four, five years, uh, I assume that seven is the maximum that we will be able to mature uh, because otherwise we will lose a lot of uh, a lot of spirit. Uh, I'll talk about the angel share later, but uh, we don't have a lot of time in the cask for the spirit to oxidize. So we don't want a lot of faints to go inside. That's the reason why we cut really high. We do uh, use some pitted barley twice a year. And uh, for the pitted barley, we cut lower because uh, the the phenols, the, the smoky taste comes uh, later. That's really interesting. Um, I think great. If we're talking about like um, from more, uh, you know, uh, way of, th different way of thinking. Uh, when, whenever I saw, you know, you, you've seen 
all kinds of uh, Scotch whiskey distilleries, uh, single malt Scotch whiskey distilleries, talking about their their cast, their about about their maturation. And what they're talking about is, we do that, and we do this. We take the water from the loch or the gland or whatever, and then we let our whiskey sleep. Our casks are not sleeping. Our casks are working. So because of our climate and because of 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 the the heat and the humidity, uh, you see the the beach behind me. It's uh, five, seven minutes walk from the distillery, this actual beach. So it's very humid. And in the summer, it goes up to, can go up to 40% and 90% humidity. For, so sorry, 40 degrees uh, Celsius and 90% humidity in Tel Aviv. So it's like walking in a soup. It's really <laughs> something like that. And it really affects the maturation. So this is why this this kind of new make, the type of the new make, the characteristics of the new make really helps us with this kind of of maturation. Our casks are working and the new make have to fight them. Well, I must say that everyone, when we th when we talk about hot climate uh, maturation and the pro the quick process, everyone thinks uh, on it uh, as an advantage. And it's not always an advantage because we have to monitor the cask and to make sure that it develops uh, the way we want it to develop. Not quickly, not very quick, but uh, we have to monitor the cask every half a year to touch every cask. Uh, the other uh, disadvantage, big disadvantage that we have is the high angel share. We have in average around 11% annually angel share uh, from each cask. And that means that we lose a lot of spirit. Wow. Now I just want to uh, uh, shift your attention to Joe Lawson's question. And, uh, and then also Reb Mordecai's uh, expansion on that question. So Joe's asking if you use any local barley from Israel. And then Joe further asked if you had plans to use. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll answer only her first question because the answer for that is yes. Yeah. Uh, we do have some uh, local barley experimentation. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really happy with that uh, so far. We are working with the farmer to, to produce a better barley and to, uh, that will result a better whiskey, in my opinion. Uh, but we do have some casks from Israeli barley and uh, we plan to, to continue with that and to improve it until we can, we can release it. Yeah, that's really... Uh, sorry, uh, Tal, go ahead. No, sorry, um, I think that our climate... It's not the best to grow barley. It's uh, it's more fiber, fi fibers inside and not uh, high starch content. So this is why it's really uh, we we tried, we worked with, and we are trying from time to time. So we have some some local barley spirit. Uh, <laughs> the bad thing that it comes with lots of little stones inside it, so it almost broke the mill. <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> yeah and. But it's uh, it's a different kind of flavor, different kind of scent to, to the new make. So we'll see. It's, uh, we are playing with that, and we are uh, we'll continue to do that when we find a um, you know a better quality barley. Well, that's great. Uh, and I think that's one thing. There's there's certainly a romantic and a very um, uh, you know the the whole romance of of using local barley and terroir. Of course, that is uh, very attractive uh, for people who are looking for unique single malt whiskeys, unique whiskeys, period. But what a lot of people don't realize is that not every climate is suitable to to uh, uh, to barley, uh, the production of barley. And even if they if, if there is a production of barley, will that actually distill into something that is as uh, as flavorful and enjoyable as uh, as what you can get uh, from an industrial side from from other countries, and I think uh, I think this, that's also true here in uh, in Manitoba. I think uh, the barley that we produce um, can make interesting beer, but um, there's a reason why people keep going to the brands that are using imported barley. Is that uh, there's just something maybe more fruity, or there is something richer or more malty. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's not quite, it's not always the best thing. Um, but, uh, hopefully at some point, if you get the right strain of barley for your climate and, uh, and, you know, 
created in a way, maybe the right time of year, et cetera, maybe you will eventually have some, some nice local barley to do something um, uh, for the, the terroir junkies. I think so, we will um, that, uh, mostly for some special expressions uh, for the Apex series, we'll talk about it later, or for some uh, single cask or something like that. Yeah. But again, I think that it's not only the barley. If you talk about terroir, and uh, you know when when you open a distillery in Tel Aviv, um, you don't want to be just uh, just another one, just uh, just another distillery that makes um, Scotch single malt in a different kind of place. So we have a lot of DNA. We have a lot of terroir, and we, we're going to talk about it in, in the next hour. But uh, it's not only the barley, and it's yeah, not it's only the weather. We have a lot of crazy stuff that comes from our crazy minds and our, uh, you know, we are an impatient nation. So everything has to start and, and finish quickly, but we are, we do have a lot of, uh, um, a lot of terroir, a lot of local stuff in our whiskey. And if you're talking about uniqueness or looking for uniqueness in your whiskey. So I think the climate does the, the effect and the, the difference between other, other whiskeys and also whiskeys made by people. And uh, the way we are working, we are thinking, the way we are doing everything is matters and affect the whiskey. So it's different from, from other places, although we are using barley from UK. Yeah, and I think that's, that's you've hit it on the nail there. Now, I want to just go through a, a little, um, uh, you know, presentation of um, uh, some of what's going on and some of what you talked about about uh, your um your cuts and uh, uh your your stills etc so i'll just pull up that screen and we'll walk through that and then we'll get into the young single malt together so just bear with me here all right so uh we've got uh the beginning of the slide here distilled and uh, matured in tel aviv which i think is uh certainly uh, exactly. Whoops. Went too fast there. That really moves quick. Okay. Let's go up slowly here. Um, now this is a lot of this is just interesting imagery. So we'll just go through some of that here. Uh, we have, uh, some interesting, uh, things here. So here's a little image that tells us that there's something happening from Jim Swan, which we will get into a little bit later. Uh, so here's the, the, the technical side of things that, you've touched upon. Uh, so again, your barley comes from Muntins in England. Your two weeks of production, 40 ppm, that's pretty peaty. So that's really impressive. And uh, interesting size of your mash ton, 450 tons a year of barley. Is that is that what I'm reading there? Yes, uh, we are actually, we expanded the capacity. So now we are talking about uh, almost 700 tons a year. Yeah. Well, uh, wow. <laughs> okay. And then you've got stainless steel washbacks and here's your, your long fermentation. That's quite long for industry standards. Of course, as you mentioned, there are some distilleries that go a little bit longer, but uh, again, uh, 60 to 72 hours. That's uh, that's, that's pretty huge. So you're talking a minimum of two and a half days to three days of fermentation. And uh, your, your still okay. sizes. So, so uh, here, Mark, again, Mark, sorry. Yes. Um, the 72 hours is usually when uh, we start the fermentation before the weekend because we are kosher, so we're not working uh, through the weekend. So Friday, Saturday, we are closed. So that means that the fermentation, you know, just uh, expands to Sunday. On the morning. This is why it's 72 hours. Mostly it's 60 and a bit less. Well, that's amazing. That's really interesting. We'll be talking about the, the kosher side of things a little bit later, but okay. interesting that that's the reason why you uh, you go a little longer for uh, for that. That's interesting. And I'm, I'm guessing that extra 12 hours changes how the uh, the uh, the beer, how the, uh, the mash smells. Uh, yes, it affects the, the whiskey, but at the end, we fill the cask with a mixture of uh, of both fermentation times, so it's it's consistent and uh, yeah. Okay, very interesting. All right, so your two still sizes, nine thousand liter wash still, 
and a 3,500 liter spill, uh, st spirit still, pardon me. Uh, so those take up a good, uh, a good amount of space, I gather. Um, how tall are they compared to, uh, you know, the typical, uh, you know, for example, I'm five foot nine, I'm 175 centimeters tall. So how much taller than me is your wash still? It's taller than you. Uh, the wash still is seven, seven meters. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the spirit still is about uh, one meter less. Okay. So that's that's really interesting. Interesting. It's, a very, it's a very nice story about uh, the wash still, which was actually found in a secondhand uh, online website um, for in Dr. Jim Swan found it, or, or one of the guys, Simon, probably. And uh, it, 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 it looked, it said that it's 9,000 liters, it's, uh, it is in good uh, condition and a good shape. And uh, it was in Romania and it was in a, next to a barn door, but it looked just next to a door. It didn't look that, that big. When the guys went there to buy it, they, it, it was just next to a barn door, which was huge. And, uh, and they, they brought it back, it took like, almost one year to get it going again to, to <laughs> it. but it was it was in a great shape and the doctor really liked it uh mr jim so dr jim swan uh really liked this one but it, it's an artisanal one second hand in a barn in romania uh we don't exactly know who uh built it and when and what what is it made for originally but uh now we, we estimated it was made in spain for uh producing spanish brandy or or single malt that well, that's was really interesting. one, but uh, we don't really know. <laughs> okay, now just to carry through the slides here. So you've got uh, 1,200 meters, square meters of warehouse with enough space for 2,500 casks. And I hear maybe you have some other warehouses around Tel Aviv as well. Uh, you're filling 800 casks a year, well, 170,000 liters of spirit. Uh, we now expand it, so it's more than that. Oh, wow. Okay. So how many liters a year are you uh, distilling? Now we are filling around 30% more than 30%. Uh, here. Okay, so 1,100 something. Uh, that's uh, very, very impressive. And uh, we'll just get through this here. So your core range, we've got a different variety of casts. We'll talk about that a bit later. Here's some pictures of Tel Aviv. And again, gorgeous, gorgeous glasses. Uh, you talked about your sunshine and your temperatures and the humidity. Um, I'm looking forward to one day having a, a little bit of a dip in uh, in both. I guess you've got two different um, uh, water bodies near in the country, haven't you? Um, we have, we call everything a sea here, even if it's a little lake. Yeah, but we have, uh, our coastal line is uh, the Med, the Med Sea, the Tyrrhenian. And of course, we have the Sea of Galilee, which is a little lake. Uh, the Dead Sea, which is uh, something that is really important for us with uh, whiskey production, and the, the Red Sea down south. Amazing. Okay, so we'll get into the classics and, and stuff so on a little bit later. Here's some pictures of the elements. We'll get through that uh, again a little uh, later on. I've got a nice picture of your stills here, uh, not in this slide. Okay, well, we'll I'll pull up your, your very, very elegant looking um, uh, still in a little while. Let's get back to ourselves here because that's too long to, to share a slide, a slide, pardon me. And let's welcome Swami uh, who's joined. That's really awesome. And uh, if there are some other questions, um, Reb or Yarka, please let me know. Let's, uh, let's now, we're a bit late, that's okay, but let's get into the young single malt, which I have here and I'll pour that in a fresh glass for myself. Do you have any of that left for yourselves there? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> uh, if you find some in, in some store, in any store, I'll, I want to buy it. Well, I have a little one, the American version, the whiskey in blue. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, and I'll pull up a little quick picture of that as well, just so everyone can see it. Uh, where are we? There's the young single malt. Yeah, but uh, since, since we started to bottle uh, proper three-year-old uh, single malt whiskeys, we stopped uh, producing that. So it uh, became a collector's item now. Oh, I bet. I bet. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some, I don't know if you have any uh, uh, any auction houses there that do spirits. Um, we've got a couple here in Canada, but is that something that's starting to happen in, in Israel as well? Uh, whiskey auctions? 
Yes. Yeah. Ah, we are buying from from Scot from Scotland uh, from several auction sites. No, in, in Israel you don't find any auctions at the moment, but uh, you know, but Israel is. Uh, we all feel we are part of Europe, so we just uh, interfere with with our. <laughs> well, just to to mention, uh, Mark, you have other version of uh, of the young singer Mark. Yes, right. Uh, yeah, so the one... uh, mostly two versions uh, in su- in several batches. Uh, the first one was the 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 yeah, the triple cask, sorry, and the triple cask uh, we mixed, we vetted ex bourbon casks, uh, STR casks, and uh, ex Isla oh. casks, and uh, it was a lightly pitted spirit, uh, not whiskey. We are calling whiskey only spirit that uh, aged for more than three years. We are following the Scotch rules. Uh, so I it's not. I was going to yeah. say, I think I think that's really um, very, very big of you, very, very global minded of you uh, to make that distinction, even though Israel has no such uh, no such law uh, to mm-hmm. that effect. So uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Well, well, we have uh, we have no whiskey tradition in Israel. We just started it, and uh, we, were we, are, we are aiming global. So uh, we wanted some some. Uh, it's for recognition and for uh, just to 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 be in some standard. So we voluntarily adopted the Scott rules. Very smart, very smart. So this one I have, I have the young single malt, the last one. This is a double cask of X Red Wine STR, Shave Toast Rechar, and uh, an X Bourbon. And I think you mentioned it's around nine months. And it is, again, it's very light. It's very fragrant. And uh, just beautiful uh, citrus and uh, some nice malt. Uh, Not especially... um, uh, dark fruity at all. I don't know if that's enough time in the cask to develop that, but um, well, I should say also uh, Lachaim. Lachaim. <laughs> Cheers Lachaim. again. I can tell you that we've been uh, introducing this, not this one, the, the younger one, the, um, the triple cask. For the first time, it was the end of 2018. Our first show ever was the London Whiskey Show. And we were there with, you know, we came too many people there. Every, every stand had two persons, and we were like, you know, five of us. <laughs> and uh, with the, the new make and the young single mode. And I, I remember that if you take one sentence from, from what we experienced there for, I think it was around 6,000 people in three days, it was really only five months. Because uh, the, the, the triple cast was aged for uh, five months, but of course it was just uh, for us just, just to showcase our, our ability before we make uh, we, we get to the uh, to the age of uh, calling it whiskey, and it, it was crazy. I remember it was crazy. We got a lot of recognition because of that, and we got a lot of recognition from from guys in the industry. I remember from Ian Chan from Kavalan and from Brian Nation that used to work that back then from Jameson and. Everyone and the, the last day came up to you. Have to see what those crazy Israeli guys are doing, and it was you know something that was wow for us. It was such such great uh, opportunity. Now, did you tell me there's a little bit of peated malt in this? Not in this one. Not in this Not one. In this. Okay, um, it is. It's really bright. It's very warming. Uh, I get a little bit of uh, some kind of darker fruitiness on the palate, mm-hmm. um, but um, when I'm tasting this, if I didn't know it. If I didn't know it, I would assume this was three, five-year-old single malt, maybe even older than that. And on the topic of, of, of uh, Kabbalan, since you mentioned, I had some of the early Kabbalan releases. And I'll tell you right now, those were four years old, and they tasted younger than this. <laughs> so, uh, so interesting. Uh, but really nice. And as I'm as I'm tasting and smelling, the fragrance is building, and uh, really, really lovely. And uh, again, Tomor, if that's your work, uh, it's very, very impressive. Thank you very much. I just want to say that I adore everything that uh, Kavalant does. They are doing great with it. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, the progression, uh, fantastic for them. They've done some amazing things, and I've had the chance to try younger of their uh, their Sherry Solist uh, about six years and nine months. And then when I was in Korea in the summertime, I picked up one that's almost 10 years old. So I really get to see the progression. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that kind of progression for you as well. Uh, now, just back to, I want to get into uh, something interesting before we move into the single malts. And again, just to quickly uh, say welcome to everybody. We have uh, Dustin, who has joined in, uh, Swami over at Mal Mal Malta in Montreal, Welsh Toro, who is, uh, uh, well, we, we go way back as well. We have James Morgan. Welcome. I think that's the first time on uh, the channel. So welcome to, uh, to Whiskey Whistle. So really happy you're all here. And this is quite interesting. Even though we're at, um, again, about, you know, quarter to 12 in, uh, in Canada here in Winnipeg, we've got uh, 15 people watching live, which is, which is great. And I'm guessing that's going to build up as we move into the single malts and then also into the cask strength because uh, because people people love the the whiskey whiskey nuts really love uh, the cask strength whiskeys don't they uh, okay so now this is what I want to talk about and we'll uh, have a, a quick sip so that I don't lose my uh, my voice so again uh, cheers guys cheers oh delicious all right so uh, let's talk about how this idea of milk and honey distillery became a reality. My oh. first question is when did uh, when did you guys first say to yourselves I want to make whiskey? At what point did that occur? So well, we because, have uh, because we're not we're not in the same age. Um, I think Tomer and I met when I was uh, conducting whiskey tasting and he was actually a young guy and uh i w was wearing a kilt at uh, 40 degrees in tel aviv or something like that <laughs> but uh um anyway i used to work for diageo back then um so i was always at the whiskey um around whiskey but tomer is a you know he's a self-made man he's a, he's exploring and distilling and brewing and everything and and he's just just do he does it all the time at home. He's like a bootlegger. He's like a bootlegger from a kibbutz, and uh, and this is this is crazy. So, uh, Tom is going to tell you about about his side of the story. But I think that uh, we we are not the founders. Not none of us. Uh, Gal Gal Galchen is the founder, and I actually met uh, Gal and the rest of the guys. Uh, they they gave me a call in 2012. Uh, to come and uh, to listen um, to a crazy idea about opening uh, whiskey distillery in Tel Aviv. Of course, I, I went there to tell them not to do it. And because uh, <laughs> uh, you know, for an Israeli to wait for 12 years, it's uh, you know you don't plan that far away ahead that, uh, in the Middle East. So, <laughs> and uh, I think that later on they told me that Gal was. You know, they, they came, those guys came from the uh, high tech and, and, uh, and startup business. And his best friend just introduced him to whiskey. And he introduced him to whiskey because he, he was one in my, in my master classes back then. So it's all because of me. But then uh, Tomer was there from, from day one. Actually, Tomer was the first master distiller and, and actually worked with Dr. Jim Swan. Uh, and I came back only later on uh, to join them. So I was there on the first day. By then, I came back. Door. That's really amazing. Yeah, so, uh, wow, I'm reading all the, the comments. I, I'm not with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 29, going, right? You're 29? I'm, <laughs> wow, well, how old am I? <laughs> uh, 38. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm 15. This is why we, we age much faster. <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. It's the, the angel share. Exactly. But yeah, that's true. The first time I went to a whiskey lecture, it, it was with Tal wearing a kilt. And I remember that as a good experience. <laughs> well, that's really amazing. 
And uh, are you are you aware? Were there was there a time when uh, when either yourselves or the the founder uh, thought to themselves, you know what, this this is this is becoming too difficult. There's too many roadblocks. There's too many obstacles into getting this off the ground. Let's throw in the towel. Or are you aware, uh, either for yourselves or for the founders, did they did they say, you know what? I don't care if I have to to sell uh, to sell my house. I am getting this distillery started. Well, I no, to be honest, not uh, from day one. We had Dr. Jim Swan with us, and he already knew how to produce whiskey in such a climate and uh, and in really really uh, like. Uh, climates like us so we never we never wanted to throw the towel, the towel and, uh, and stop doing it we we were, was believe we were believing in in the project from from day one till now uh, although we had tough tough time but uh, like we are like this COVID year but uh, <laughs> I think that if you want an Israeli to do something, just tell him it's impossible. <laughs> um, and it's impossible to open a whiskey distillery in Tel Aviv, tell someone it's impossible. I guess that uh, Gal, uh, our founder, um, which is, is around your age, Tomer, yeah? it's around 38. You want and to, to call Gal, uh, he is available. Do you want him to go online? Yeah. If, if he can, that would be incredible. Um, so that would be very, very, I think, very interesting for people to to see uh, to talk to the person who kind of hatched the idea. All right, yeah, he was just texting me a minute ago. Um, but anyway, I think that uh, he wanted to be the pioneer. So it's not only it's impossible, but no one did it before that. And I think that for for Gal being the first one, being uh, having the first whiskey distillery, uh, he, he told me a few months ago that when he fell in love with whiskey. Instead of uh, buying a glass of milk, he bought the whole cow. So instead of buying a case of whiskey, he, bought, he, he opened a distillery. So, uh, <laughs> but, but for him, yeah, he, 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 he wanted to be the first one. And uh, of course, I uh, want to be an international. You don't take Jim Swan for just small projects. Uh, I think that's an absolute um, axiom. Uh, that's a fact and very, very impressive. Now, uh, just so the people are aware, I'm pouring the elements of sherry, and uh, uh, again, that's uh, uh, courtesy of uh, the distillery. So again, thank you. I'll get that poured. It looks like that when it's able. Yeah. That's one oh I'm yeah, gonna... yeah. We'll, so we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll pull that up in a minute. It has a nice box. Maybe I'll pull up a, a little image of that right now. Um, now. As we get into the milk and honey classic and the elements of sherry, could uh, could you walk me through the uh, the casking or the ins and outs of the classic and then the elements of sherry? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear the. I had oh. some uh, problem with the sign out. No. Uh, well, let's let's go through the the portfolio. So we we have the classic as uh, as as one expression, and it's his own series. And for us, it was uh, as Domer calls it um, a table whiskey or a whiskey for everyone. We don't call it an entry level because in in our size of a uh, craft distillery, uh, entry level is not something that we know. No, of, it is an entry level. It our entry level, yeah. But it is, it is a whiskey for everyone. It's a whiskey that uh, you can all relate to. And it's mostly uh, based on ex-bourbon casks, a little bit of STR red wine cask, and just a drop of a virgin In general, oil. most of the barrels at the distillery are ex-bourbon. We source it from the US. And uh, that's because I really love and believe in ex-bourbon. And I think it's drinkable. It's... It gives the the distillery character place, and uh, it don't it doesn't disappear all the character of the new make. So that's why I really love to work with experiments. Uh, so here we have around seventy five percent experiment, around twenty percent SDR, and the rest are uh, virgin oak. 
And this is unchilled, filtered, and natural in color. Everything that we do, all the whiskeys are unchilled, filtered. That's why it's bottled at uh, 46% ABV. And uh, we don't use any color or uh, any additional of uh, color. That's amazing. Now, what I'm smelling here, and I'll just uh, stop sharing that for a minute. Uh, I am smelling, again, just the wonderful vanillas, but also some very rich multi tones, which is is quite attractive. There is some uh, some like sweet oatmeal. So the grain, I really, really get a sense of uh, of the grain here in a really multi delicious sweet dessert like type of way and there's a touch of of, uh, of grassiness and again delicious fruits i get a hint of the sherry casks working in the background there which uh, i guess that's very to me that's very well put together when when i first tried the milk and honey classic and i think i'm just going to post myself a little bit more intimately here when uh, when I first tried that uh, that milk and honey classic for the very first time, of course you you whenever you're trying something new, you relate it to what you already know. So I thought to myself, hmm, Glenmorangie, Mortlach, and a little bit of something like Glendronic all combined together, and I thought to myself. I don't know what the, what age this is. At that point, I didn't I didn't research and see what what how many years old this was. I thought to myself, okay, well, if I were trying this for the first time, I would assume this was twelve, possibly fourteen, maybe even fifteen years old compared to to single malt comparable single malt Scotch whiskeys. So um, I'll uh, I'll do this right now. First of all, I'm gonna uh, again say uh, Lachaim. So cheers to you, gentlemen. Lachaim. Mm. And I'm going to give this a preemptive malt hug mm. and a little malt kiss because this is really, really beautiful. And I don't know if that's weird that I do that, but uh, uh, okay. for me, it's fun. And I think this really deserves it. And I think that everybody who is into single malt whiskey and you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, I've tried a lot of single malt scotch whiskeys. I've tried some uh, some Japanese. What else is there? You know, of course, there's Scandinavian single malts. There's uh, uh, India and uh, Taiwanese. There's a couple of distilleries in Taiwan. There's American single malt, Canadian single malt, Eastern European single malt, Italian. Uh, it's impressive. But now we have something from Israel. And how does it stack up? It stacks up head to head. Absolutely. I would put this head to head with any of the whiskeys that I mentioned at the ages that I mentioned. And I think a lot of people would say, yeah, this is, this is the one for me. So really impressive. And um, again, just thank you, Tomer. And also thank you, Tal, for, for getting this out and um, just really, really impressive stuff here. So uh, again, cheers. Cheers. I can tell you, it's, it's uh, funny that you mentioned uh, Glen Orange because uh, we did <clears throat> our first launching was actually this like it looks like a decade ago but it was in uh, on uh, january in um uh, in amsterdam because uh, because uh, um, well holland yeah holland was the fir our first market uh, for young single malts and then we did a first launching even before uh, before tel aviv and so we, we split, Tomer went with uh, one of the sales guys to uh, Amsterdam and I was going around Arnheim, Nijmegen, all, all kinds of uh, those kind of cities with, with, with Hans, my, our importer. And in one of those stores we got in just to do a little taste. And so they asked us, okay, we know about the, the hot climate. How do you compare this? How many years it, uh, in hot climate is like in, in, uh, in cold climate in Scotland? I told, I told you, no, it's not scientific, but what do you compare it to? I thought, you know, I think it's around between between eight or ten year old Highland or Space Side. So they went into the back room and brought uh, um, a blind tasting of two glasses for each and one of us. 
and I love blind tasting when it's not uh, in when my my products are not involved. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we did tasting, and one was really appealing in a second, and it was uh, it was already open and very nice, but it had less body and a finish was a little a little short. And the other one was very thick, and after a few minutes, it opened and was very, uh, you know, overwhelming. And then the finish and, the, and the, uh, the texture was much, much bigger. And it was the second one was the classic, and the first one was a ten-year-old Glen Morangy. So for us, it was amazing. For me, it was okay. We, we, we always, you know, we are afraid to fall in love with what we're doing. But when you get the stamp for uh, in the blind tasting with with other guys. Um, we, we knew that we are on the right track. Now, this is the type of whiskey lover that, that I am aligning myself with myself because this is exactly me. So Joe Lawson has whiskey from 15 different countries in her cupboard. I think that's a few more than me, but uh, I, think, I think I've reached about that many for uh, in, in my, my whiskey review archives. I've got some Danish and uh, something from Hungary, um, of course, India and uh, Taiwan. And very soon I'll have uh, bona fide reviews of your products up very soon. But this is the type of um, a whiskey lover that I think is going to really change uh, change the uh, the market uh, in the future for whiskey are people that that have this desire to tour the world with their palettes, and I am all about that, which uh, which is impressive. And look at, uh, th this is another uh, quite uh, prolific whiskey reviewer. This is uh, uh, Greg from France, and, and he's got 13 countries and, uh, and growing. Now, of course, he's a special type of person, and so am I. We're not your typical consumers, um, but, uh, you know, in my club as well, we have people that just want to try all, all different things, and I think that's really going to fuel uh, fuel the progression for you on the world stage and to get your whiskey into more markets. And that's another question I wanted to talk about. But uh, really amazing, the classic is absolutely something that that I really really enjoy, and I'm glad that uh, okay. that I also bought one even before this all came about. So really amazing. Uh, now we're going to have a quick taste of the elements of sherry. And for people who are uh, just watching now, I'll, uh, I'll give you a little view of, uh, of the color of this one. So a little bit darker, and maybe I'll put those side by side. Mark, I think Gal is online, so you can... Uh, oh, great. Let him in. I'll get him in. So there's the two side by side, and uh, you can see uh, a little bit of, uh, well, quite a bit of a, a hue, a change in hue, a little bit towards uh, the, the red hue. Um, so much more coppery, a reddish copper versus the golden hue of the classic. And uh, well, let's welcome Gal into the stream. Hello, Gal, welcome. Uh, Mark Kaufman here at Whiskey Whistle. Thank you very much for having the time to join. And if uh, I think I speak for everybody who is uh, watching and chatting along with us. We're so happy you're here. So uh, a big cheers and a big lachaim to you for joining. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've we've been talking a lot about you, and the uh, the gentleman assured me that uh, when you had this idea to create the distillery, the milk and honey distillery. There was never a point where you wavered and thought to yourself, this is too tough. I got to give up. It sounds like you just, just went for it and uh, wanted to get that to that, to that uh, finish line. And I'm impressed. I love your whiskey. So maybe just talk about that for a minute. Actually, only must today. Say, today, today yeah. is the day. <laughs> I feel like, this. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm sure that he had uh, tough, tough moments uh, that he said, "Why, why did I do that?" But I, I don't think he sometimes wanted to give up. Gal, no, no, you're here, no, not no, talking no. to you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my baby. I, I love, uh, I love the idea, and, and I 
keep spelling love in it uh, every day. So, uh, of course, there are very tough times and very tough days uh, in a distillery, uh, especially a distillery in nowhere like Israel. So, uh, it's not easy, but uh, yes, uh, we want to go all the way to the to be the best whiskey in the world. So, uh, we are keep doing it. And I think you're on the right track. I'm uh, again. I'm really enjoying that, and uh, I'm I'm just trying the milk and honey elements sherry. Uh, this is this is fantastic, and it is. This reminds me of of things like um, uh, Glenmorangie La Santa, which has a, a two year finish in sherry. I don't know what uh, what's happening with the casks here, so maybe walk me through that. Yeah, so let's yeah. talk about it, uh, a little bit about the element series. And the idea yeah. behind the element series is that not to overpower the, the distillery character and the new make and the ex bourbon cask, it's all based on the, around 50% ex bourbon cask. But then to each, each, uh, to each expression in the portfolio, in the elements, we add another element, another cask element. So here we have uh, sherry casks. Uh, PX and Oloroso, uh, around 40% of this, uh, of this whiskey is uh, cherry cask, our cherry cask. And uh, it's interesting because this sherry is kosher and correct me, I don't know if, if that's true, but I think it's the only kosher sherry in the world. Uh, but I can assure you that this is the only uh, whiskey uh, uses kosher sherry casks. So, I can tell you that, uh, sorry, Tomer, it was, uh, when you think about producing a kosher whiskey, it's, it's not really a problem because there was no whiskey in the Bible, so there's no regulation. If there were whiskey in the Bible, we probably had, uh, you know, a crazy amount of uh, regulations and rules to follow. But when you're using um, great uh, based products like wines or sherries, uh, it has to be kosher. And there was no kosher sherry. There is actually a, a fino, a fino uh, from uh, Gonzalo's Bias, uh, Tio Pepe, but uh, the rest of them, we, we couldn't source uh, casks from, from all kinds of uh, uh, very small brands or small uh, productions. So what we did was a whole seasoning project. Um, so we are actually, we made the wine with a rabbi from Barcelona, down in Jerez in southern Spain. So we made the wine. Um, it's a joint venture between a rabbi, uh, a bodega, a winery, and a, um, and a cooperage. So, of course, it started off as a, originally to, to be, uh, to have a kosher seasoning uh, project. But the good thing about that, that we can actually follow and monitor the quality of the wine, the quality of the casks, and and just to know exactly what we're doing and not just sorting them or buying them from uh, from another broker or, or just, uh, you know, buying all the, all the, um, the sherry cast. So eventually it's amazing for us. And I think that sometimes people, uh, they say, how did they say, Tomer, that it's like an old style of sherry, not sherry bomb, because we don't do, um, this is not our house style to do uh, over over something. And, but this is, I think, uh, balanced. And when you get this kind of sherry type, the Oloroso and the Pedro Jimenez, with two uh, sizes, with cherry buds of 500 liters and uh, hogsheads of 250 liters, it's, it's great for us. And we really like this project. Well, it's amazing. And the first thing that jumps out at me when I am trying this uh, elements of sherry is just beautiful dried fruits and lots of honey i think coming from those bourbon casks and i agree with you i think i think this is this is the most complex and interesting way to 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 put a, a sherried element into a, a whiskey that is uh let's say kind of declaring it sounds like declaring their house style to be resting in bourbon casks so you've got something that is related to your house style, but then uh, bolstered and slightly 
uplifted with uh, with these sherry casks. So really, really impressive. And I want to pull up these notes again because as I'm smelling and tasting this, these are the most honest notes of uh, uh, tasting notes that I've ever seen before. So absolutely dominant, rich red fruit. And I'm not I'm not just saying this because this is in front of me. This is exactly what I'm smelling. And and I get the chocolate and I get interesting honey. Of course, honey is not mentioned here, but it's there. And the finish is absolutely very long and delicious. And absolutely, yes, there is some cigar that uh, that's coming through that's making this amazing. Now, I don't know uh, which category of winner this was. Maybe you could share that with me. Uh, I think that's really amazing because uh, that's that's not a uh, that's not like the um, uh, the person whose name I won't mention that wrote a Bible, who is basically it's just his idea of things. This is a panel of people that pick uh, the winners at the World Whiskies Award. So, what was the category that you won? In the World Whiskies Awards. Yeah, the World Whiskies Awards. I'm not uh, really sure about that. We can ask. Uh, I don't remember. I think we, we were best in category in something, uh, New World Whiskies or something like that. But, um, it, you know, medals and, uh, and prizes are great. They work. And, and, you know, for me, they're great as uh, doing the sales and then for marketing. But sometimes for us, uh, we really like your reviews and, and the guys that are in, in here and their reviews and Sometimes we think that there are more competitions and medals than whiskey. So it's, it's great for us, but it's, uh, <laughs> I don't, really don't remember. Best in category, I think, for world whiskeys or something like that. But uh, it's, you know, we, we like the review of, uh, of the people, and uh, it's great to have a medal, but it's not the, the main thing. No, not at all. If I mean, remember. If you remember right, uh, the, the competition is, is rock like this, that uh, not every category, I don't remember the category also, but not every category as, as a, a category winner. Uh, you need to get a high enough score to be a category winner, and I understand oh, yeah. we got this, uh, this score. I, 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 I don't think we asked uh, what category it is, but uh, we know the score is very high, so it is... Mm -hmm. You know, that's really, really amazing and very humble. And I think that's so telling of the type of uh, distiller you are that that you're not you're not so focused on all of that peripheral, the peripheral awards and, and so on and, and the reviews. You're you're focusing on on your work on putting fantastic whiskey into the bottle. And I think I think all of those things follow, right? Um, it's it's just like it's it's like you've 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 made a choice to to do your work and to be into it and to love it and uh, and then everything follows right that's the right way to go about um, trying to to get uh, uh, any type of notoriety is you don't you don't focus on that you focus on your work and with your hard work those things just fall into place and I think that's that's really really telling of uh, the uh, uh, the type of metal that you're made of. So uh, very impressive. All right. Now, I, I, think, uh, I think if I can say uh, we decided, I think it's something that uh, we didn't talk about it uh, never, but I think it's Tomer character and my character also that uh, we want to be the best in in what we are doing. And, and we wanted to, to do a very, very good whiskey. And, and it's expensive to do a good whiskey, by the way. It's it's more uh, the uh, products are more expensive and everything is more expensive but we wanted to do the best whiskey uh, we can do and i think tomer is very talented and he can he really is doing a very very good whiskey and, and i think that the prizes and the medal are coming uh, because of it's coming from really from what we want to do and from the art and 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 it's not uh, it's not because we want to sell a lot or something like this. It's because we want to make the best whiskey. I think there is, uh, there's two medals for us. One is that you know uh, critics review and not only medals. Uh, we just been picked uh, for the best uh, world 
best 20 whiskeys uh, in uh, Whiskey Advocate, the American version of Whiskey Advocate uh, in the last magazine. But most important, I think that we are doing a good job in 20 countries, 20 markets um, outside Israel, and we're going to be in 26 at the, the end of um, the first quarter of this year. So I think that more people are, will enjoy milk and honey and m and whiskey and, and our gin, and I think that for us, this is the best medal. Now, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. I'll just jump around to the questions I had asked. So what are the new markets that uh, you'll be entering uh, shortly? Well, uh, um, we just started with the Far East um, uh, for in the, the last um, a month or so. Uh, so we started with Taiwan, uh, Philippines, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Uh, I have a meeting with China in the morning, so we'll see what's up. Uh, Russia, Sweden, and Switzerland uh, at the moment. So, and that, this is for the first quarter. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, wow. The rest, uh, we we are all over. Oh, Argentina in Argentina. Um, really? so we have a lot in Europe. Uh, you know, Europe is what the closest to us and the best uh, uh, partners, of course. Uh, Yark and Greg um, in in uh, in uh, Calgary. Uh, in America, Americans for us, uh, America for us is is an amazing market. And uh, uh, last year was almost twenty five percent of our uh, export was uh, to the American market. Uh, we go with Impex, and which we are kind of a Jim Swan band there with uh, Home and Pendarin and Golden Corollas with the same importer and. Um, and, and the UK, we, we, we work with Pandarin together in the UK, uh, and La Maison de Whiskey in France. So we have we have a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if, we, if I'm not opening a new market every two weeks, I'm getting bored. So um, <laughs> but I can't fly until uh, my second my second uh, shot. I can. Tomer got his second shot of vaccination today. I got my first one uh, a week ago. So yeah, we are. Uh, we're just about to fly anywhere. I think my, one of the most um, exciting or, um, I don't know, um, markets for us was um, um, the United Emirates, which uh, we just signed a peace agreement with, with them like a few months ago. And we, I think, two weeks or just a few days after, uh, after uh, the government signed a peace agreement, uh, we started uh the process and we are actually selling uh israeli products in dubai so for us it's very exciting that's that's incredible and peace peace is uh that's that's what we want for the world isn't it yeah. so that's that's really amazing um congratulations on that and just uh, just incredible uh now we'll get into the gins and the roots herbal liqueur in a minute and before we do that i'll get i'll get those poured and uh, you can walk me through that in a minute. But um, I want to start talking about uh, about Jim Swan a little bit, the late Dr. Jim Swan. And for people who are just tuning in, we're trying single malts. We tried some of the basic single malts, the standard, the excellent, delicious global products uh, that uh, Milk and Honey makes. Now we're trying some of the gins like this uh, uh, Levantine gin. This one is un, uh, un-oak aged. So I'll just pour that in my glass. And then we have an oak aged version. Um, how long is that aged in oak? Uh, the oak aged version is uh, around three months in oak. Three months, oak yeah. Market. That's a good amount of time. And exactly what is, what is Za'atar? Za'atar. Za'atar. Yeah. Um, Zatar is a wild herb that grows, uh, actually it's a protected herb that um, is a kind of, uh, it used to be almost distinct and uh, now it grows again. It grows in the upper Galilee mountains and in the mountains of Jerusalem. It's, uh, let's say, a far relative of a wild spicy oregano. If you know oregano you buy in the supermarkets, it's not the same one. It's the same family. And you got this, the wild oregano, which comes from Italy and and, um, and Greece, and our side of uh, 
the Mediterranean, which we call the Levant. You know, it's Levant, it's Israel, Lebanon, Syria, this side. So this is why the gene is called Levantine, it's the Levant. And the wild herb we call Zatar is a, is a kind of hisop or high soap, but a very spicy wild one. Um, and we use it an oilier, a bit oilier. We use it fresh and we use it dry in two, um, in two um, stages in the production. So actually this gin is, uh, is based on the new make. It's a single malt gin, which is based on the new make. Um, so instead of, of uh, taking it down to uh, 64.5 and putting it in, uh, into cask to make whiskey, we just take it into another alambic, uh, a little a little pot still two, 250 liters, very small one. And we soak the herbs inside, which is um, um, lemon, chamomile, uh, black pepper, Luisa, um, lemon cinnamon. verbena, lemon verbena, cinnamon, oranges. You know, we're from Jaffa, Tel Aviv and Jaffa. You know, Jaffa oranges, uh, local oranges, and of course, this zata, fresh zata. We put and juniper, we put it in. Um, for 48 hours of maceration, and then we distill it again with a little carter head, with a little net. In the net, you have, again, lemon peels and uh, dry zato. And then it va the vapors goes through it, and it's a triple distilled, single malt, spicy. Um, if you've ever been to Tel Aviv, you know that our culinary scene is crazy. I think the best restaurants in, in America uh, that won the, the James Beard Award or, or whatever are Israeli cuisine. It's because we are a mix. So we are from Tel Aviv, and Tel Aviv and, ja and Jaffa is the same city. Jaffa is 4,000 years old. Tel Aviv is 120 years old. And it's all one mix. Uh, Jaffa is, uh, you have uh, Christian, Muslims, uh, Jews, and very old people, young people all living together. Tel Aviv is... Tel Aviv is our capital. It's not the real capital, the real capital of Jerusalem, but it's the, liber the most liberal, the culture capital, the, the financial capital of, of the country. And just think about, we are Jews that came from all over the world. My, my family, um, you know, my mother came from Bulgaria, my father from the Ukraine, my wife, his father from Iraq, and our mother's from Berlin. So just think about dinner. And this whole thing with the spices and, and the influences I think uh, goes into this gin and goes in, into our cuisine. And this is, you talked about the DNA. This is us. That's incredible. Israel. Incredible. And again, uh, cheers and lachaim to you. This is really amazing. And it's very sippable. I'm drinking this at room temperature and uh, uh, beautiful. I can smell something. Is there some lime in there as well? No, not lime. We not have lime. lime. But just beautiful, and I, I don't know exactly what that um, uh, the uh, zatar is like. That oregano, I think the lime oregonum syriacum, oregonum syriacum, very interesting. Oregonum syriacum is like um, Syrian oregano. Hmm. Something like that. It's it's a way, very wild oregano, wild high soap, high soap or whatever you call it. But it's nice and sweet, even though there is this is just distillate. It's got a nice sweet edge to it and nice and herbal and really uplifting and uh, almost um, almost ethereal or I, I don't have the, the right word for it, but um, the the herbals are really uh, really affecting my uh, my my nasal passages. This is this is great for this would be great for something like um, uh, like a hot toddy, I, I think. You should, think, try, you should try our martini. We are, we're making martinis from that one, but instead of of, of uh, vermouth, we are putting in some uh, either uh, fino sherry or manzanilla or even palo cotado, and then instead of olive, just a drop of olive oil. You know what I will do when uh, when I'm when I'm reviewing this? That's exactly what I'll make. Just make sure you send me a recipe. Um, I'll go get some. Uh, uh, some some fino or 
or something like yeah. that. And I'll try that recipe. I think this will be just fantastic in uh, single malt. And it's very oily and rich. And I, I have to say, you know, thank you for putting that out at 46%. That's, uh, you know, again, hats off to you there. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. And the, uh, the oak aged. And I'll pull up the, um, the slide for that one. Let's see. Hope I have a slide. I think I do. Okay, so here's, there it is. Okay. All right, bear with me. All right, so here is on the left-hand side of, uh, of the screen, we have the oak aged, the Levantine gin. Now, is that the same recipe and then simply oak aged? I don't know if I have a, a delay in uh, in in, in yeah, yeah. What, what was the question? Sorry. Oh, pardon me. The uh, the oak aged gin is the recipe, the herbals, the the botanical recipe. Is it the same as the standard yeah. unaged it's one? The same as the Levantine gin uh, that goes into a cast, and I love how it changes. It changes it totally. You can feel some of the herbs. Some other herbs disappear, and the the cover of the of the wood of the vanilla notes. I really like how it affects the this gin. Yeah, really lovely. It really adds a nice, uh, sweet, soft, you know, very sippable vanilla kind of a, a flavor to it, which uh, which I think is great. And uh, again, beautiful color, a nice light, a um, little bit beyond straw and into the, uh, let's say, call that like a pale, pale wheat type of a color. And I guess it's the combination of all those herbs, but I'm getting this interesting lime peel type of uh, scent going on. Really nice. Cheers again. Cheers. Hmm. <clears throat> Delicious. And uh, and then if you could also walk me through uh, your roots herbal liqueur. Oh, that the, would uh, also uh, be great. The idea behind the roots was uh, to make something to celebrate Israel's 70 year. Uh, it was three years ago, I guess. I don't remember. But uh, the idea behind it is to, to take seven personas and uh, and each one uh, had to choose a herb or a spice, any spice that for him represents Israel or Israeli Israel cuisine uh, the best. And uh, each one chose his spice or herb. And then I had to mix it and to to do a liqueur for it from it. And it was a hard job, but uh, I think it's really it got, we got really interesting result that I'm really happy with. Uh, the the color comes from uh, it's not aged at all. The color comes from uh, from honey and from uh, black sugar that we melted inside. And uh, the the dominant smell is of honey and the cardamom. If, if I can tell the truth behind uh, this product. Uh, we, we we had uh, to do something for the 70 years from Israel, so we thought about doing something that we we are a risky distillery. We don't want to do a liqueur, uh, but but we said let's do a liqueur and then celebrate the 70 years and then let's put it out of the market. But it was so good that uh, we are still doing it until today. So uh, I think it's amazing product. It's a light product. It's very easy to drink. It's very, very a good one. I like it very much. Uh, and I'm a whiskey person, so I, I, I think uh, we can see the buyers. We can see we, we did something good, although we didn't want to do a liqueur. So uh, it's a very good one. I know that the production guys don't like it because it's sticky. <laughs> uh, it is, it is nice. So we see it's not in big scale. You know, we are a whiskey distillery and gin is still 
uh, because of it's, it's a different kind of gin, so it, it still goes great. But there are some markets that really like this one, and of course, uh, we like it. And it's uh, for me, it's uh, an alcoholic herbal tea. It's it's really nice. Yeah, but uh, what what I'm getting here with this roots, uh, I guess there's a tiny bit of juniper. I'm thinking, and I'm getting that on the on the nose. But then the palate. First of all, it's not sweet like your typical liqueur. I want to say it's only got about a quarter or maybe an eighth of the typical amount of sugar you'll have in some liqueurs. But there's something kind of like um, licorice or anise. And um, there's tarragon. Tarragon. Uh, tarragon. And definitely some, some pepper. Uh, just really, really delicious. And um, for, for a liqueur, that um, uh, again, that for me, that's also a for fairly big departure from what I typically drink. I can see myself wanting to have this uh, on occasion uh, as a, as maybe like a, a, a digestive after I've eaten something and just want to sit and sip something delicately sweet with some some nice flavors. So really, uh, really, really enjoyable. And it's also nice with tonic. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Right. But by the way, when I'm not feeling good, this is what I drink, and it's making me feel very much better. So, uh... <laughs> well, now I have to clean my palate with some coffee, and then we'll get into the cask strength whiskeys. We didn't All quite right. talk about uh... after the, the cask strength whiskey. Mm. But I so, think, Mark, I think that we started to mention our. Uh, uh, the terroir. So I think for us, it's something that we talked about what we call the Apex series, which we just launched in, in Europe uh, and it, on its way to, to the States as well. And, and of course, our what, what Jim Swan fell in love with when, when he was uh, taking this project uh, with Gal and Tomer was uh, that in this kind of very small country of uh, 450 kilometers from from north the northern point to the southern point there are five climate zones so um of course we can try and we are uh testing an example you know trying and, and experimenting with um aging in different climate zones and i think they're the most interesting one of course we have just think about it from for you as a Canadian, such a big country to go to the supermarket is like for me to go, uh, I don't know, but um, let's think about that, that tomorrow uh, you can actually go and ski in the north and in six hours drive, you can uh, scuba dive in the south in the same day. That's so incredible. In, we are... Tel Aviv is uh, zero elevation, so it's on the, just next to the Mediterranean beach. 45 minutes drive uh, to the east, you're in 750 uh, meters above sea level in Jerusalem. And then one hour later, you're down at 430 meters below sea level at the Dead Sea, which is the lowest place in the world. And we have around 30 casks that are aging at the Dead Sea in uh, or and one of the hotel roofs, we're just changing them from time to time. Uh, if we talked about the 11% angel share in Tel Aviv, we have around 25% angel share in the Dead Sea. It can reach 55 degrees in the summer, and uh, it's very it's very hot, very dry. The air is heavy, the air pressure is heavy, so it's amazing to see two twin casts, same feeling date, same type of cast, same type of type of uh, wood and they are so different if you age them at the Dead Sea or at the Mad Sea and this is going to be one of our most um, interesting experiments and if we keep talking about uh, DNAs um, we have pomegranate wines uh, or pomegranate winery in Israel we are using their cast that was aging pomegranate wines which I think we are the only country that makes it and uh, it's very high in antioxidant, very healthy. Uh, I actually don't, I'm not crazy about the wines, but I think that 
the casks is is great for uh for a different kind of whiskey and uh we just launched uh the apex which is our third tier just a, a little bit above um oh you got one um so yeah it our experiments our craft way of thinking our crazy stuff are going to be at the apex series which are small batches pomegranate wine casks kosher cognac uh casks uh fully matured chardonnay casks uh dead sea desert upper galilee jerusalem casks whatever we can do we're going to surprise you every few months all right so here, here's a look at the labeling for the apex series and I, first of all, I have to say also that I love the shape of your bottle. It's very distinctive. Um, I love the uh, the angle uh, on the top edge of the label. That's uh, that's very distinctive. But uh, anyway, really looking forward to trying some of these. I hope that um, that Canada is going to get some of those, and I'm sure that um, that uh, 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 Greg Winters and and Yarka Winters want to get some of those into uh, into Canada as well. And if so, I, I'll. I won't even hesitate. I would put that into my club tastings for the Winnipeg Whiskey Club immediately because I think uh, from what I'm tasting, if, if this is amazing, how interesting and unique could uh, the Apex series be? So, uh, uh, you know, fantastic. What a great thing. And the, the different types of wines, I think that's also very interesting for, for changing the, the, uh, the profile that people are used to for whiskeys. We have uh, we have a company in Canada called Shelter Point that uh, that, that did a, a locally produced um, blackberry wine that was aged in in oak, and so then they they took those those oak barrels and they they put their whiskey in it. Turned out just incredible, different but so amazing. So I think that's that's quite a, a fantastic uh, pursuit and uh, incredible to 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 try. So uh, fantastic. Now, just before I get into these cask strengths, let's uh, let's have a, a just a very brief chat about uh, uh, the the gentleman that uh, that unfortunately um, left this world, uh, who had probably such a profound effect on uh, on on your distillery. And I'll just pull up a picture of uh, the late Dr. Jim Swan, and um, maybe whoops, that's not what I wanted to share. Pardon me. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, uh, either other gal or or Tal or Tomer, if you could maybe tell me a little bit about just the influence that uh, that this uh, this this gentleman who left the world too quick, um, how did he inf impact and influence uh, Milk and Honey Distillery? So, uh, Tom, if it's okay, I will start. Yes, uh, I, I think if if we uh, 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 what what Tal just said, if I quote Jim Swan about Israel, he said it's the best playground in the world. I can be in the north uh, in the snow, and I can be in the south uh, in the in in a lot in the in the negative in the, in the place in the desert. And I can be in the lowest place in the world, and I can be in Tel Aviv uh, uh, as uh, a very high humidity. And I could do all of it in, in like a six hours hour drive. He loved he loved the place. By the way, he loved our culinary. He loved our wines. Uh, it was amazing to 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 be with him. He's so he's an amazing guy. Uh, it it's. When you sit with him, I, I, I really loved him. I really, I think uh, every time I just got got inspired from what amazing guy and 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 his love for culinary and his love for, uh, of course, whiskey. Uh, so I think uh, I think we got a lot from him. And and I didn't talk with him about. Uh, Tom, we'll talk maybe about. Uh, by working with him uh, on the blend and on the uh, on on the uh, our distiller and and stuff like this, and our machines, he wanted to do everything. He wanted uh, he wanted our machines to be in this way and not other way. But but Tommy will talk about it better than me. 
but uh, I must say about about the men and the gentleman is so amazing uh, and he loved Israel. He loved everything about it. So uh, we are lucky uh, that we work with him. And I think uh, we have, uh, of course, Tom is a very, very good and, and amazing uh, distiller and, and has amazing uh, ends. And uh, but I think uh, also Tom is very. Uh, uh, I think we all uh, uh, lucky to work with the gym staff. So uh, maybe you want to add something more. Well, working with Jim Swan was a big uh, honor for us. And I think it was pretty obvious to, to go to Jim and to have him on board because of his expertise in maturing whiskey and producing whiskey in hot climate uh, like us, like in Taiwan, like other uh, distilleries in the world. And uh, he helped us from day one, building and planning all the distillery. And uh, the angle 45 degrees down was his decision, and uh, a lot more. Every aspect during the, the production process, uh, he had something to say and something to, to teach us. And, uh, and uh, I think we are really producing a great whiskey. A lot of thanks for that is for Jim Swan. Uh, and we all miss him, of course. And we mentioned him. That's, that's an amazing tribute, uh, Tomer. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I, I get a sense of the, uh, the emotional connection that you had, and it's, it's very heartwarming. <clears throat> and I wish, I wish I could have met the, 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 the man. And uh, I know that some of my friends were able to, um, and I know he worked very closely with you and also with a lot of other distilleries like, uh, um, uh, like the, the Taiwanese distillery Cavalon. And uh, a buddy of mine that, that lives there got a chance to, uh, to meet, meet the gentleman. And, and Ian Chang that we talked about earlier, uh, having such a close relationship. And I think for Tomer and also for people like, uh, like, like Ian Chang, uh, you have your path set in front of you just because you work so closely with, with him that uh, uh, you'll, you'll never be out of work no matter what, just because of the, the 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 know-how uh, and to to draw a relationship to a popular TV show that I can't mention because it's a little bit taboo but uh, uh, you are very much like uh, like the uh, uh, not the you're you're the what's 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 his name you're the Jesse you're the Jesse to the Walter White of uh, of that TV show and I think people know who I'm talking about uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you later I'll tell you later <laughs> <laughs> so pretty amazing. Uh, anyway, big, big cheers and a big uh, lachaim to you, gentlemen, and uh, just amazing. Really, really enjoying my time here with you, and it's, it's. Uh, I, I feel emotional myself right now because I think anybody who falls in love with something like whiskey, when, <clears throat> when somebody like that uh, leaves the world, you know, you're just overcome with emotion. So. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, now I want to tell you what I'm tasting right now. This is uh, an ex bourbon cask strength, 55% uh, release. Uh, this was uh, distilled in 2017. Uh, so this, I guess this is actually two years old. So I guess it's actually not quite uh, whiskey per se for, for some countries. No, um, mm hmm. And this one is cast number 2017-0257, ex-bourbon, unpeated. So really excited to try that. Um, beautiful stuff here. Uh, we're not sure what age is that, but uh, it's probably one of the uh, samples we sent over to uh, yeah. uh, Gray and Jaka to Craftworks. But um, so, so we, we, we're not uh, sure what we have there. This cast yeah. was probably blended somehow. Oh. <laughs> Something it's uh, like it's that. it's one year and eleven months. It looks like about uh, three days away from two years. It was uh, from two thousand seventeen, so it's it, well, it's a whiskey by now. Mm -hmm. but, no, but really, really delicious. Glass, so, uh, yeah, not not in this uh, type. Yeah, <laughs> not in this glass. Really delicious um, uh, baked, uh, you know, baked tarts and um, uh, Danish pastries. 
and then lots of uh, lots of delicious like vanilla, um, kind of like uh, what's that called? It, the, the the white stuff they drizzle on cakes like icing, vanilla yeah. icing or um, very delicious, very sweet, very lovely. I think mm. that uh, both Tomer and myself and, and probably Gal, when you taste a very good experiment cask, you know this is it. And of course, you you can blend it later on and some sherry cask and some peanut cask and whatever. But you have to start with a good meal make and very good uh, bourbon cask. So this is the the white canvas, and then you can start uh, play with the, with the colors uh, just to, to make a good blend. But you have, so, to, you have to good. The good I have whiskey. to tell you a story about the uh, first uh, whiskey live we've uh, been in. Uh, there was a very uh, famous uh, master distiller, I will not say the name, that came and tested our new make, our, uh, uh, our uh, distilled uh, liquid that never been in a cask. And then he tasted it and he said, wow, it's drinkable. Mine is not drinkable. So, <laughs> So, so I, I guess this is it. It's very sweet. Our new make is very sweet. It's very nice. Uh, and I think it's make everything very, very good. So, uh, yeah. And I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and I guess uh, when Tomer told, uh, said about Jim Swan and the 45% degrees of the distilled uh, of the field, uh, this is the reason. Jim uh, yeah. Swan knew. Uh, what is doing a new how to make uh, our uh, new make uh, uh, the best uh, it can be and uh, and i guess this is the reason uh, it's so tasty yeah it's really it really is really amazing now i'm trying an str cask and this one is again a one year 10 months and uh, i tried some of this last night as my uh, my my nightcap before uh, getting to bed, and uh, I, I was taken aback with the boldness, the spicy edge, the again that that delicious um, uh, bakery, delicious desserty type of, uh, of flavors coming through here. Well, that's all combination uh, of the maltiness and the the sweetness and fruitiness from the from the new make, and that's what STR does. It gives a lot of spiciness in the finish it gives just a little bit of whiny notes and it gives a lot of wood what what uh, warms it up and uh, and mixes really nice uh, with the new make character and i think i think especially on the palate i'm getting the the delicious uh fruity character some um, uh, very ripe plums and um uh almost almost overripe strawberries where they're they're just so sweet and um, if you don't eat them now, then you're going to have to throw them out tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So that really delicious, uh, rich red fruitiness, which is just amazing. And uh, it's halfway to be a gem. Mm, right. Say. Totally. Totally. And then the next thing I'm trying is the Craftwork Spirits. Uh, this is the personally bottled one. And it looks like 3.5 years, I think. It says okay. 3.5 YO. I think that's what that means. Yep. And yep. Uh, this one is 53.3%. And uh, I haven't tried this one yet. So this is my first time trying that with you. Um, you, have a, you have a cask number on it? The cask number. Maybe uh, Yarka, if she's still watching, she okay. could share that. Um, oh, yeah. Cask number 2015. Uh, maybe maybe two zero zero three or just zero 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 three. I'm not sure which. <laughs> it's Tomer and writing, so <laughs> I guess we don't know what it is. Yeah. No, zero zero three was it uh, the visitor center? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was the visitor center one. Yeah. So this is uh, Sherry. No. Extra wine cask. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I reckon that one. And it was the bottle your own cask at the mm. best point. What kind of wine? It was Cabernet. Uh, uh, Israeli Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, some really lovely 
you know, I can't describe it any other way than saying that it's got a wine, a wine, uh, like dark, very dark wine edge to it. And uh, Yarka is sharing this now. Thank you very much. I'm really happy uh, that you're still with us. Uh, she says, this is the first whiskey sample we got and poured it at the Spirit of Toronto in 2019. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. So oh, yeah. history. Yeah, I know. I sent it, yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know, but, you know, from living in Korea, every time you, you drink, you say you say cheers in Korean, which is called uh, uh, kombe, kombe in Korean. So uh, having lived there so long, I, I have developed that uh, that that habit of every time I I try I pour something new, I just say cheers. So I don't know about your culture in um, uh, in Israel. Do you do you say uh, lachaim very often throughout the night? Yes, <laughs> every glass. Okay. Every glass. Well, lachaim. lachaim. It's for life, by the way. So, uh, for life. Well, in that case, lachaim. Thank lachaim you very life. much. Thank you very much for for this night. It was a, it was a great evening or uh, morning for you. Mm hmm. Mm. This is the best one yet. Yeah, we don't really, have really potent, really uh, lively, but. Um, you know, and again, maybe what you're saying is right. This is maybe a bit of a big departure from from your your house style, but um, in a, in a good way. I, I get all of that uh, that that interesting oiliness, but also just this really big, huge, sweet deliciousness that's coming through on the palate. Well, usually I don't really like uh, wine casks. Uh, as age with whiskies so this one i really liked it that's the reason we chose it for the bottle your own uh, it's very different from other wine casks but uh, you have to try the in, in the next few weeks probably it's going to come to uh to canada but uh our, our two other elements so one is the pitted casks and the other one is an uh, israeli red wine so you tasted one that was a single cask, but the elements has a very good balance between the wine casks and, and the rest of the casks. And it's a different kind of wine. We have a 3000 year old wine culture here and the terroir and everything, if you talk about wine, of course it's different. And our wines are, are extremely different. And I think that, uh, I hope you're gonna like it. It's, um, I think that Tomer has had the, the best, uh, you know, the, it was the hardest uh, thing to do. It was exactly this this blend because of what he said. It is doesn't. It's not crazy about wine casks, but um, eventually, I think uh, <laughs> the two of us it's the, it's the one that we like the most. The, the red wine wow. cask uh, because it was so hard to do. I can respect that. And what what a result! So I, again, I would just buy that on spot if I saw that available. I wouldn't even think twice about it. Um, now, the last thing I'm trying for tonight, and I saved it for last because it is peated. Uh, this is a milk and honey whiskey distillery, M&H, single cask, peated cask finish, exclusive edition, the first whiskey festival, The Hague, 2019? 2019, yes. So this one is actually an ex bourbon with uh, a pitted uh, with an ex isla finish. Yeah, I, I remember this one. It was hundred and fifty five. It was a hundred ABV. Yeah, yeah. Hundred bottles released for uh, the Hague uh, Whiskey Festival two thousand nineteen. Now we have uh, we have the. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Cal. Please go ahead. You should come to this festival. It's an amazing festival in the egg. Uh... Actually, last year, um, in 2019, uh, Greg and, and Yarka joined us there. So we, we yeah. met halfway. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was great. I'm, you know, I'm, I, miss, I miss meeting people and I miss uh, whiskey, whiskey shows so much <laughs> that this was great. We opened around seven markets and we're opening six markets now without meeting people. And this is, for me, it's worse than everything. Wow, yeah. I know. 
you know, it's it's really, uh, I've got three kids. They're very young and they're just going crazy because, you know, there's just nothing to do and it's, it's just so hard on them. Um, but um, even for me with my regular, my day job, it's so hard to meet people and I'm kind of new. I'm a realtor and uh, it's so hard to meet people to uh, to make the connection because how how do you you can't do business with somebody that you haven't met face to face that's that's uh that's really tough um yeah. so i i can really respect how hard it is for you being being you know i mean you're not new but you're new in a sense that there's still so many people out there that have never ever heard of milk and honey whiskey distillery or the israeli single malt whiskey that we're drinking now uh so anyway just uh let's 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 hope that we have a quick finish of, uh, of of COVID, the pandemic, and we can get back to something kind of like the life that we had. It'll probably be never be the same. I think it'll never be the same. But um, uh, let's hope. And uh, a final lachaim as I try this uh, this peated uh, whiskey to, from the Hague. I have to tell you a secret. Alan Tomer is uh, already immune. Oh. So, uh, uh, yeah. so he was mentioning. We had the vaccination. Good job. Well done. <laughs> and you, you're still here. You, you're still fine. You're, you feel yeah. okay. Yeah. So that's good. I'm sitting, sitting on my tail. I'm sitting on my tail, but that's it. Now, what I'm smelling here with this, this peated cask, single malt, single cask, is actually really, 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 really sugary. On the nose, it is. It's got like uh, uh, like the turbinado sugar, uh, and then a hint of peat coming through, and also something kind of uh, a little bit fresh and herbal. And then as I taste it, mmm. That peat cask has really given it a really interesting slight touch of smoke, touch of um, uh, like a, like well toasted, um, a well baked apple pie or something like that. Really interesting. Mm. Beautiful. Now, uh, uh, Tal, are you having the same thing? Yeah, no, no actually. Uh I have this one. Uh, I have it in my office, so uh, I don't know why I have a one of the bottles or brought it back home. Perfect. Um, yeah, we had only one hundred bottles for this. Uh, we kept uh, uh, the non-filtered, the, the one with a little, uh, you know, sediments inside. So I'm drinking this one with the sediments. So, how did this fare at the whiskey festival, uh, the Hague, in 2019? I have a feeling that this was probably one of the favorites of the night for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, we we really love the Dutch people, and uh, I think the festivals in the in Netherlands are great. And it is um, it, the funny thing is that most of uh, all of those uh, whiskey festivals in Holland are in churches, and for us as Jews, you know, we have been to more churches in the last few years than in synagogues. Uh, because you know we're from Tel Aviv, so we're not very big with synagogues. Um, so anyway, it's uh, yeah. This one was sold out in in the first or second day. Uh, we did another one in in Frankfurt, which we had to pace the the sales. We did just one hundred bottles. It was even before we we launched the classic, and I remember that. Um, after two hours, 50 bottles were sold. And so, yeah, we, we, you know, we're making a lot of buzz, like our country. We're making a lot of noise. And I think that uh, people got crazy of this one. And, of course, it's, 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 a, it's a nice whiskey. It's a good one. And I really, really miss those guys <laughs> and uh, miss those whiskey festivals. But uh, special expressions for whiskey shows, I think, uh, it's even before people taste them. They like uh, to to get it as a as a you know as a collector's item as a as something to to keep. 
Now, Joe mentioned she thinks this, this is more like toasted almonds, and that's that's a great uh, analogy, I think. Uh, and then she also asked this question, which I'll just I'll pull up here. She wants to know the dates uh, the dates for Whiskey Live Tel Aviv this year, and if well, the tickets still valid. Yeah. She she was supposed to come last year, but there the because of the COVID, uh, everything was shut down. Uh, Tomer, do you have a new date? Yeah, right now it's supposed to be in the at the beginning of uh, June. Uh, final dates will be published soon. Uh, we don't have it yet. So, well, you know, very smart because this is an election day, so everybody will be immune. So <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. <laughs> Uh, Gal, I really enjoyed chatting with you. It's it's really fun, and uh, I, I just I, I can't wait to meet you in person someday. And I'll I'll make a promise uh, to you that that when your I I don't know about this year, but perhaps next year uh, for the the the, the whiskey mm -hmm. live uh, Tel Aviv, or just to come and and check out this distillery together, um, I'll make a point of of getting there. Um, and uh, having some time to spend with you, if you want, only if you want. If you don't want, then I won't come. But I will, love, no, no, no. I, I, I will love you personally, and uh, you will have a very great time in Tel Aviv. So, uh. Awesome. Looking forward to that. And we have a, a nice comment from uh, Yarka as well. Um, she enjoyed the Hague Festival, and she recommends to visit that one day. And for sure, I would love to get there as well. Um, it's it's tough because there's so many festivals, and you really gotta you've really gotta kind of navigate. At least for somebody like myself, if I'm gonna spend, let's say you know five thousand or ten thousand dollars in a year to travel, which I eventually hope to do, that'll be probably two to three far away festivals that I can can attend, and that's about it. So uh, please. Uh, um, Please, please pray for for my my success in my day job as well as my success with my my midnight work here with Whiskey Whistle, and uh, I can't thank you enough, um, all three of you, um, uh, Tal, uh, uh, pardon me, how do I say it, Chot Chotina, and uh, Tomer uh, Goren, and I think I. Have a hard time with your last name. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's why I didn't wrote it. You can say uh, the president or uh, the king or yeah. something. But, uh, Kalkstein? Kalkstein? Kalkstein. Yeah, yeah. Kalkstein. Very Kalkstein. Good, very good. Kalkstein. Yeah. Not bad, very not good. bad. Okay. No, 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 man. Um, I prefer king, but uh, you know. <laughs> cool. You, you guys will have to uh, uh, help me to relearn some of my heritage. Uh, mm -hmm. To you know, just to to recognize, you know, like boy, I'm I'm like uh, I'm I'm actually like a quarter a quarter of my heritage is is, uh, is a Jewish line from uh, my father's side of the family. So, so uh, nobody is perfect. There's, there's a, a lot of Kaufmans here, Kaufmans and Kaufmans. There's lots of them here. So yeah, yeah. We... <laughs> and this is this you is quite funny. Up. I was talking about this with uh, with uh, Reb Mordecai um, a, a week or two ago. That I I researched my family line. I've got I've got some books from my father that uh, that talk about about things. But uh, you know, with the improvements of um, researching your family lines online, um, I have a picture of my uh, I don't know my great 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 grandfather whose name was uh, uh, Raphael Kaufman, and he was born in 1817 or something like that. And then I. I found out that his his father uh, was from Germany originally from Frankfurt in Germany. He moved to Denmark and uh, started a uh, a store. And also, his his job was written as a uh, um, uh, a brandy wine burner. Okay. So really interesting that that uh, he was uh, in the the distilling or the um, you know the selling of, of distilled uh, brandy, which is incredible. And so sometimes when I feel like I'm playing with this uh, this copper thing back here, um, I feel you know what that's part of my heritage. So yeah. <laughs> I don't care. It should be allowed, and it's it's uh, an interesting ex exploration. So I'll I'll get my hands dirty if I can with you, Tomer, if I ever come there when I come yeah. there. 
Uh, You're really welcome. We'll have some You're fun welcome. together. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thanks to all of the people that joined tonight. We have a few people that have uh, have left already. We are almost at uh, the two hour mark and I've gone over time. Thank you gentlemen for that. I really appreciate it. Big thanks to, to Reb Mordecai. I'll pull up a comment from him. Uh, big thanks to him uh, for, for uh, hanging out here and uh, helping me through the, uh, all of the comments that were coming through. And I think that this video, it will live on as a regular video. We'll probably see um, uh, hundreds, hopefully thousands of uh, views in the next coming uh, weeks or months. And, uh, oh, I guess James Morgan didn't leave. And uh, uh, Yarka says thank you. And uh, thank you, Yarka, for helping put this together. Really appreciate that. And, oh, I I've got to share this picture of Joe before we sign off uh, because I think it's really – really amazing and uh, just lovely that that she is just so interested in the m &H whiskey. So uh, so there she is. And um, hopefully I'll have uh, maybe better pants, better floral, <laughs> interesting. I, 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 uh, Joe, I promise you, I will find some, some floral pants to recreate this image when I'm in Tel Aviv to, yeah. uh, to share. And I'll recreate that pose as well. So you're such a star. And uh, really, really thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, so thanks a lot. Yeah, really amazing. And anyway, I don't know what else to say, but thank you so much. And if there's any final comments, you better share them now. This was just a fantastic night. And uh, uh, Gal, keep on keep on pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to, to tell, I hope that... Um, you, you can get into more and more markets this year and next year. I think everybody needs to try this. And well, uh, we need more whiskey ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we need more whiskey. Good. That sounds uh, great to me. Tomer, I love really what great. you do. Keep doing it. It was really great being here with you and talking. Uh, Tal, do you want to sing something before we finish? No song, yeah. No, just uh, uh, a very good I night. Think about, I think about. <laughs> good Let's go for that. Um, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And uh, I can't wait to share that with my friends here. Uh, just gorgeous stuff. Beautiful evening. Wonderful spending time with you guys. And, uh, boy, these are just amazing. I can't wait for my club to try this. I think that we'll probably see this in Manitoba very soon. That's where I, I'm in Man Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, I, I'll try to get that... Um, pushed into this uh, this market because they're all in Canada we're all like separate countries and I, I think know. everybody needs to try it uh, we have a very large Jewish community here in Winnipeg as well and I think everybody's curious so they need to get that in front of them so they can try it and I hope to help with that but anyway uh, great evening thank you so much we have uh, Aladdin Sane joining late here thanks for joining um, Reb again thanks so much and you guys are awesome uh, Greg and uh, Yarka Winters, thank you very much. And we'll see you very soon. And gentlemen, uh, we'll keep talking. I hope to uh, keep in touch with you very often. No problem. Thank you very good night. Much. Thank you so much. Night. Okay. Good, good night, night everybody. Bye, Bye now. Good night. Take care. Thanks a lot, Tomer. Bye-bye.